Hi all, now you will hear a brief retelling of the movie Desert Flow its plot is based on real events. Subscribe to the channel, get a like. Enjoy watching it. Weris is a 13-year-old shepherdess from Somalia. Her mother has divided the tortilla into small pieces and distributed to all the children. Varys promises her younger brother that she will never leave him alone. The story takes a leap into the future. As an adult, Varys wanders the streets of London, and afterwards she walks into a fashion boutique and picks up a whole bag of jewelry. And when a saleswoman comes up to her and threatens to call a security guard, she immediately runs off and hides in the bathroom. In the stall she looks at her passport with a smile. The weeping saleswoman burst into the bathroom and confronted Somali Ikrigen, who had forgotten to lock herself in. Varys knows literally a couple of words in English, more like memorized phrases, even though she has lived here for six whole years. She pursues an English woman who has run into an elevator. Marilyn tries to escape from the strange girl, who for some reason persistently pursues her. Varys is left alone and, having found a cardboard box, was forced to spend the night under the open sky. The girl picks up loose change and deets from the garbage can. She saw her acquaintance on the bus and followed her again. The girl took pity on the dirty, stripped down Somalica and let her sleep over for one night. But Marilyn lives in a boarding house, and the receptionist doesn't want to let the homeless woman in. The weather's a sunny downpour tonight, Varys spits out another phrase. Shush still agrees to let the homeless woman in, just dibs on not peeing on the carpet. A grateful Varys kissed Cannon's hand and called her mama. While Marilyn slept, Varys cleaned the entire room and made coffee. The Englishwoman wrote an address where Varys could try to get a job and gave her a jacket. In the corridor, they bumped into Neil, the manager, who was attracted to a girl with an exotic appearance. Varys got a job in a cafe. The visitor, who was reading a book, stared at her. He saw that the leftovers were put by the girl in her pocket. The stranger turned out to be a photographer, Terry Donaldson, and left the pretty African his business guard Varys. She was almost thrown out, but Terry asked her not to. The girl showed up at the boarding house again. This time she was willing to pay for an overnight stay. Ushba agreed when Varys called her mother again. She is shy, showing her body, so she undresses already in the shower stall. She is doing something incomprehensible in there. Marilyn decides to tease her friend and steals her clothes. Varys cooks a meal and learns English. She doesn't know her date of birth, only that she was born in the rainy season. Neil peeks into the room and starts hitting on the Somali woman. Marilyn dreams of becoming a dancer, but has received another rejection letter. To cheer her friend up, Varys agreed to go with her to a nightclub. There she met her eyes with some dark-skinned guy. Garol immediately went over to meet Varys. Her name means Desert Flower. Harold took off the girl's down jacket and asked her to dance. The guy came from New York. Varys liked him, but she immediately became frightened of something and ran away from the club. She can't go into the room, Marilyn is in there having fun with some guy. A decent woman doesn't do that, Varys chided her roommate stepping in. Only a circumcised woman. A good woman, added the Somali woman. Marilyn doesn't understand what this is about, and asks to be shown. Varys pulls down her panties. They cut everything off and then so asks the English woman with tears in her eyes. Varys was mutilated when she was only three years old. The same thing was done to her sisters. Now it's clear why her neighbor spends so much time in the bathroom. Marilyn shows her how it should be. You don't have to do that to be a woman. They don't do that to anyone here. Terry struck up a conversation with Varys again. According to him, the girl has no idea how beautiful she is. Varys wonders why her friend eats goat food. She shows Marilyn the card. She immediately perks up. Terry Donaldson is the most famous photographer, and Varys can make a lot of money. Marilyn has something to show her friend, too. Harold from the club left his address in case Varys ended up in New York. Joy was replaced by sadness. What would he say when he saw she was different there? Suddenly Varys had a severe stomachache, and Marilyn brought her to the hospital. The gynecologist was extremely surprised when he saw how the girl was doing there and set aside his instruments. I can't give back what was taken from you, the doctor said, but I can make sure it doesn't hurt you anymore. A nurse is brought into the office who speaks Somali. He needs to translate that she is too narrow there, needs urgent surgery. The doctor is surprised that she has put up with it for so long. The African says that she will betray her people and her tribe, dishonoring her mother. Because of this, Vera simply got up and left. Walking down the street, 
She stared at a woman in a hijab who had only her eyes visible behind the cloth. We go back in time. Veris complains to her mother that she is bleeding and in pain downstairs. This is good, she has become a woman. Soon she is led to a yellow-toothed old man, who begins immediately to reach out his hands to her. Tomorrow the girl will be his fourth wife. All that remains for Veris is to wipe away her bitter tears. There's nothing to be done, she's been paid for a lot. At night the girl decides to run away to Magadus Heck. To her grandmother. She promises her little brother that she will find him later and take him away. The mother would not stop her daughter, but the way through the Kaminista desert is not easy at all, Veris. She played her feet to the blood. In spite of this, however, she continued on to the capital the next day. When she saw a bush, the girl immediately pounced on it and began gnawing at the branch. The poe creature cried and remembered her mother. Completely exhausted, Veris walked out to the highway, where the trucker picked her up. He tried to take advantage of her, but the girl fought back, or rather with a stone on the head. Upon reaching Magadish, Veris found her grandmother and was finally able to eat. The woman believes that a child who has made such a difficult and dangerous journey has a chance in this life, and there is no reason for her to go back. The grandmother is much richer than her mother because she ran away to the desert to become the wife of a common nomad. After thinking things over well, Varys returned to the hospital, where she underwent surgery. A friend came to visit E. Finally, Varys went to the studio of a famous photographer. And how much will you pay me? Was the first thing the girl asked. She's going to live a better life. Terry Donaldson gets to work. Varys squints hard at every flash of the camera, but the photographer is patient. He distracts her by talking about her family. With her portfolio ready, Varys arrives at the modeling agency. After all, being a model is better than being a cleaner. But the question, can she walk? Varys answered, of course, I made it to Magadish. The girl put on high-heeled shoes and now walks on them as if on stilts. Lucinda does not understand why Varys wears that awful sack, and for something there to hide. But what she definitely needs to hide is the scars on her legs. Lucinda pays Varys a cab to come to the casting. Among the huge number of applicants she has the advantage, as Donaldson himself has vouched for her. After a series of photo shoots, Lucinda promises Varys that a great future awaits her, first Paris, then two companies in America. Meanwhile, Marilyn hopes to get a job at a dance studio. But she realizes that she has no chance to compete with the other dancers. Varys gives her a gift, an expensive Gucci watch for the big shows. Still, it is worth learning to walk, which is what Varys did in the hallway of the hostel under the guidance of an English woman. Suddenly an enraged Lucinda arrives at the hostel and calls Varys an illegal alien. Her passport had been expired for six years and she was now being deported back to the desert. Suddenly Neil got down on one knee and offered to marry him for the papers. That would solve her problem. But it didn't take. Push gets to know the man who forges the papers. Varys is ready to go to Paris to party with Johnny Depp, but right at the airport the girl is detained by the police. In the cell, the model recalls how her grandmother sent her to England to get a job as a maid. The girl says goodbye to her homeland with tears in her eyes, after all, leaving her little brother here. Because of the airport, she is brought to the Somali embassy, where she lives in a small room, a cage, and is busy cleaning all day long. No one ever taught her English. So six years flew by. After that time, there is a coup d'etat in Somalia. The embassy staff is called back to the country, but Varys has no intention of going back. She digs up her stashed passport and takes to the streets of London. Varys was bailed out. All she had to do was get one stamp within six months, and the girl would have been granted political asylum. Now she has a restricted residence permit. She has to check in every week. One violation and she's deported. Billboards and big screens show advertisements featuring Varys. Lucinda is angry, but confident that Varys will work off every penny of the £10,000 she spent on the best lawyer in London. Pushpa apologizes for setting the Somali woman up like that. Varys needs to work, and she decides to take the gamble of marriage after all. Neil promises not to molest the girl, but Marilyn is clearly not up for the idea. Neil says they have to live together, and they have to sleep in the same bed, because the immigration guys can come over at any time. It's time to do your duty. There's a big team working in the studio, but when Terry comes in, he asks everyone to leave. For the calendar, Varys has to do a nude shoot. The girl obediently stripped naked. 
The photographer promises that if it turns out well, it will change her life. Veris trusts the professional, and it helped her to relax. She dreams of meeting Harold again, but in reality there is Neil, who calls her his wife, yelling, hitting on, and groping her. One night, immigration officers raid the apartment. They search every room, and Neil takes advantage of the moment and sucks his lips into Varys. To her friend she says she'd rather be deported to Somalia. She doesn't know how she can stand living with Neil for another year. Now she is forced to sleep in the same bed with him after all, and the Englishman goes crazy over the model. Soon Varys received notice of her indefinite leave to remain. She thanked Neil and immediately removed the ring from her finger. Finally, Varys can work in peace all over the world. She is conquering the catwalks of many countries and becoming a true professional in her field. The fashionist now lives in an expensive New York apartment and eats right. She remembers Garaldi again and arrives at his address. The young man did not immediately recognize her, renewed. Well after that, Harold's girlfriend approached. Varys was embarrassed and immediately ran away. Alas, a great deal of time passed. Her dreams were shattered by reality. Lucinda is outraged that Varys dropped everything and went to Somalia to shoot a documentary about herself called The Day That Changed My Life. Back in America, Varys is interviewed and says that this is not at all the day she met photographer Terry. In fact, she's tired of these stories like going from nomad girl to top model. Varys wants to tell the story and hope it gets published. Varys will remember the day when, at the age of three, she went on a trip with her mother. In the desert, they met the very woman, the butcher, who performed a monstrous operation with a dirty blade and a branch with thorns. The wound was infected. The girl began to have a fever. Where the genitals had been, all that was left was a large scar and a hole the diameter of a matchstick head. Everything that was cut off was pecked off by the birds. Gerald sits in a cafe and resents the fact that he didn't have time to understand anything when the girl came to him. And at that moment he went into the apartment with a neighbor. And then he sees in a magazine an interview with Varys from the tragedy of female circumcision. Varys herself was preparing to speak at the headquarters of the UN and a friend came to support her. Later, Gerald came here as well. More than 3,000 years of family in Africa. They are convinced that an uncircumcised daughter is unclean. What's between her legs is unclean, which means it must be removed and sewn up. On the wedding night, the groom takes the blade and makes an incision before penetrating the bride. Uncircumcised girls are banished from the village and equated with prostitutes. This continues, even though the procedure is not prescribed by the Quran. After it, the girls are left sick both physically and mentally for life. One sister of Varys did not survive the circumcision. She bled to death. The Sakan died during childbirth. As a child, Varys did not want to be a woman. It is very painful and sad, but now she is proud to be who she is. Worldwide, 130 million women suffer the consequences of circumcision. Varys was the first woman to bring attention to the problem. In 1997, she was appointed UN ambassador to combat this horrific ritual. Since then, female circumcision has been banned in many other countries. That's an interesting movie, if you ask me, write your opinion about it in the comments. Also be sure to subscribe to the channel, because I try to make new videos every day. Watch other videos that appeared on your screen. Bye.